Uh, okay, let's start with uh, uh, with the lateral dynamics. Uh, I thank Apurva who has done all these uh, you know drawings on the board. So she's my TA, and uh, thanks a lot for taking your time off to draw this. She has done it very beautifully. So we will look at how lateral forces are are developed now. Um, remember what we did. We are going to we are going to extend that. And we are not going to derive again lateral force separately. We looked at in the last class, just to summarize what we did, we looked at longitudinal force development and we did that using what is called as the brush model. We recognized that the contact patch is divided into two areas and we said that if this happens to be the contact patch then you have what is called as the sticking region and the sliding region. We developed a quantity called slip, it came naturally in our de definitions okay. and ultimately we saw that the force, the FX, the longitudinal force is a function of slip and it happens to be something like this. Okay. Now, we have to come back to this portion, we will do that um, a bit later. Okay. We got it straight mu into qz, the question is whether this is going to be a straight line or not, but I do not want to waste time, she has done, drawn it again and let us go back to the or go to the lateral force development. Okay. Now, what do we mean by lateral force development, slip angle and restoring torque, pneumatic trail, these are the terms that we are going to look at in this lecture. Okay. Now, let us say that uh, th this is uh, the picture of a single wheel, let us say that uh, the vehicle takes a turn, okay. so you give a steering angle steering angle when I am I'm saying steer, when I say steering angle it is referred to the wheel. Let us say that delta is the steering angle is the steering angle. Of course, it is not the angle with which you steer the vehicle that would there would be a ratio between the two. So, I call that as the steering angle right. Now, so we are going to view it from this point of view. Okay, This is how I have steered it. Okay. So, that is what we are going to view. So, in other words, this one what this, this is the plan view or you view it from the bottom of the tire and that is this direction. Okay. We are going to see what this, uh, this direction is, in other words, this direction is. Okay. We are going to give a name to that a slip angle. So, we will see what it is, but before that get the global picture that when we talk about slip angle, it is the angle from the steered angle, it's from the steered angle. So, what you are going to do is to sit here after the, after you had given that steering input and then observing what is happening at that point of time, clear, have that coordinates Right. So, what is it that is required when you take a take to cornering? We have already seen this. I need a centripetal force okay, in order to accommodate the um, centrifugal or centripetal acceleration whose d'Alembert equivalent is a centrifugal force and the centrifugal acceleration. Okay. So, I need one Fy. Now, let us see how Fy is developed, very quite complex, much more complex than what happens in the longitudinal case. Okay. Now, imagine that this whole tire is rotating, right, rotating. Now, what is that I need? I need a force here, that is the force I need and that is the force which is pushing it out, which is the what we call within quotes. D'Alembert's force or centrifugal force. 
right. So, in other words, this becomes the sticking region, okay, the, the vehicle, the, the tire sticks to the ground like before and that is the force which is now going to push the wheel out. This is the force which is going to push the wheel out, right. So, that is the Dalmbadi equivalent force, right. So, both these forces now have to compensate. So, how is this force developed? Similar to what we did in the longitudinal uh, case. Now, I am going to have these kind of sticking elements, okay, and as this wheel is pushed out, pushed out in the y direction, these sticking elements are going to be stretched, they are going to be stretched, and this stretch produces a tension which is going to pull the wheel inside. So, in other words, this stretching in the y direction of these tread elements, what we call as the tread elements or the bristles, bristles or, or the brush model, that gives a push in the y direction and the result is that I get the centripetal force. But then things are not just that all of them are going out, things are not as simple as just getting a pull. So, as you roll, now, now look at this, as you roll, because this plane is now getting pushed out, so as you roll, you hit the ground, note this carefully, as you roll, you hit the ground at this place, okay, at, at one place. Now, that place is ahead of the sticking place, so this is how, you know, it is rotating, the corresponding point is here, right, because of the fact that the sticking makes it not possible for that to roll in, in one plane, okay. The contact patch gets a very skewed appearance, very skewed appearance. So, what happens is that this, this point comes in, so this point later gets to this point, that, that point later gets it to that point and so on, because it has to stick and when it comes out, it has to go back to the plane to which this wheel has been pushed, right. So, it is not one straight line. So, it goes, it goes like that and comes out like this, clear. So, that is the shape of the contact patch, that is the shape of the contact patch when cornering takes place. That is the first thing I want you to understand. Any questions? Yes, exactly. So, it is a tread. So, what is this? This is nothing, but if you if you sit in a tread, okay, with respect to the ground, okay, first you will move, you will come down like that, then you will hit the ground at that point, right. So, then the next guy is going to, because there is going to be a pull, you know, you are going to be here, the guy who is in front of you will go and hit that point and so on the same fashion as the contact patch moved above you. In that case, here also the contact patch is going to move above you, but the contact patch is not a straight patch, but it is inclined because I have to cater to the needs of two planes, one plane sticking to the ground or one part sticking to the ground, the other is that the wheel is going out. So, it comes like this, goes like that, clear, okay. That is how I can do it, fine. Any questions? Sir, uh, bottom part, how are we giving this direction, sir? Actually, when we sit on the, say, remove the vehicle, we hit the ground. So, when the next guy comes and hit, it pulls like this. This direction yes. is fine. How yes. are so, this so, what happens here is, look at this diagram. Look at this diagram. Initially, when it, when it was rolling straight or if, if it were to roll straight, this whole plane would have been like this, this whole plane would have been like that, right, okay. So, now because of this force, the plane gets like this, right, clear, okay. So, that is what is manifested as this twist. In more simple terms, this twist. 
Clear? When you get back, you have to get back to that plane. You have to, when, when you are rolling, you are in one plane. You are sticking, you are in another plane. Okay? So you have to come from here to here. From here to here. Okay? And then get back and go to this plane. That's what is seen here. Clear? So that's why this skewed appearance. What's the result? The result is that the tire just, just doesn't roll like that. The velocity, there are two velocities now because there is a lateral velocity and there is a longitudinal velocity with the result that the resultant velocity is not like this but is like this, which is equal to an angle which you would call as alpha. So the wheel now moves actually in the resultant velocity direction which is alpha to the plane, this plane which I would love the tire to move. So I am going to move and I do not want it to move because if, I, if it moves like that, all my pulling does not exist. So I am not going to get the lateral force. What is ah, okay? We'll we'll come to that. What is t? We'll come to that in a minute, right? Now, go to the next step. This cre creates a obviously a shear force which has to which has to be compensated by mu into n. Or in other words, this this guy who's sticking is pulling. Th th these are the the bristles which are pulling. Okay. If that friction there, the same old guy which we saw in the longitudinal direction, if that friction is overcome, what will happen? It will slide in. So it will slide in. Right? Same concept. Nothing new. Right. Now, let us see what happens, what happens, let us, let us just put that and what happens during the sliding, you get the normal, normal view, okay. Let us say that, okay, that is, those are the deformations. Okay. You know now, by now you know that there is a race between mu into n, the normal force, as well as the, the frictional force, right? We know that, right? So let us say that at a particular x, which we would call as x sliding, this is overcome. So there is a normal force, you know that, there is a normal force and there is a, a tangential force. Obviously, as, as I move, look at that, as I move towards the rear of the contact patch, the pull is going to increase, the shear force is going to increase, so I am going to go. Okay. Then later, I have to go back to that original plane, so my pull is going to decrease and I, so I have something like that. Right? Okay. Now, let us say that up to this point, up to that point, the tangential force is able to hold. So it will be sticking. After that point, it is going to now slide. At that point, there will be sliding. Right? Okay. So in other words, so after xs, let us say that xs, then it is going to slide. In other words, the, de the development of Fy is not symmetric. How do I get Fy? Integrate this, right? And in other words, it is the sum total of this pulling. And obviously, this pulling is not symmetric about the center. The pulling is less in the front and the pulling is more as I come come down, right? So this Fy, if this were to be the contact patch, 
if this is the center of the contact patch, okay, where does the FY act? It will not obviously, can it act here, will it act here? Unless it is symmetric, it is not going to act at that point, right? It is going to be shifted, right? So, where will it be shifted? To the rear and that is what we have here that the because of this this unsymmetric distribution i have an fy which is not which is not symmetric which is at the center in other words in this diagram i can't draw it exactly at the center if this were to be the center so that fy will be displaced Clear? So, that is what happens here. And that distance, what is the effect of that distance? Exactly. So, it would create a moment. What does that moment do? What does that moment do? That moment rotates the tire and aligns it back to the straight running position. Okay? and aligns it back to the straight running position. Hence, this is called as the self-aligning torque or moment. So, we call that a self-aligning torque or aligning torque or aligning moment, whatever you want to call it. Sir, after that straight line has kind of no, it is it, 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 the, it is the it is It's not that it is please note that it's not that it's not in contact with the ground because this contact patch is this. It is it is in contact even if it slips, yeah, if it slips or slides rather, that's the correct word as I said, even if it slides, it is not that it is away. It slides and still is in contact with the ground. Yes, of course. Okay. What, that's the maximum force, which is mu into q z. Correct. So it is. It is though the figure looks like that. It's it's a three-dimensional figure, and it's not that it has lost contact. Right. It's, this whole thing is the ground. Clear. Okay. Now. Now, please note that it is. Both the, these guys are now you know reducing towards the end and there is a race between two reducing quantities. So, it starts slipping as it starts slipping at one point of time okay, it may so happen that the slipping may engulf and, and that that would be the force distribution of all these bristles. And so, Fy will be uniform when, when, when Qz, when sliding, completely sliding takes place okay, of every, every bristle that is there, then every bristle will have that Q into mu into Qz and then it will be completely uh, symmetric, right. Okay. So, now if I plot this graph that will be my Fy and what do I plot it against? What is x? x? It should be slip angle which I would call a sigma y. I am not going to derive this, this is exactly the same, the deformations are exactly the same. Derive that, the, so I just replace it, I am going to de derive a combined slip in which case you will understand what is going to happen. Okay. Uh, so, that is what happens. Now, if I plot plot now m y, it is a usual practice to plot as minus m y for the simple reason that if this is positive this is positive, okay. x, y, z should be 
inside the ground. Yes. Some bristles are sticking and then they're moving. And then yes. After, what is how, what is the physical difference between a slipping bristle and a sticking bristle? Sliding, sliding, sliding bristle and a, and a sticking bristle. Yeah. What is? The physical difference, because even the sticking bristle is moving, right? It's not... It's no, not. it is sticking. That's exactly what we said. It is only deforming. It is not moving. This is not motion. This is only sticking here and it's not moving. Okay? It is... It is it is just, the head is here. This is exactly how we developed in the last class the longitudinal force. Okay? So, this is the guy who is sitting in the carcass and moving and this guy is here, is sticking. Okay? So, that is what we, I mean the difference between that is what caused the force. Clear? Okay. Go back and look at last class, we did exactly that and that is what it is. Ah, so, we will come back here and usually it is, it is the minus sign that becomes, uh, I mean that is what is used because Z is in this direction, but actually the M is, is in that direction. So, this being positive, that being negative. So, usually it is plotted as uh, like this. So, it should be should be something like this. So, where should it come to 0? And I, I think it is better that we plot here. Where should it come to 0? Full sliding. So, when you reach this point, that should be 0. All right? So, that is the region where it is sticking few sliding and complete sliding. Okay. Fine. Uh, we, will, we will now look at a small, a simple mathematical model to understand uh, the derivation for, for Fy, Mz as well as Fx. In other words, let us look at a situation where uh, just a second, where we are going to have both a longitudinal force as well as the lateral force. In other words, you are breaking while cornering. A common thing that would happen, breaking and cornering. Yes. Sir, uh, when the tire starts sliding, you lose the control over the vehicle? No. We are not, right now we are, when I say sliding, a part of it is sliding. Okay. Yes, that is in other words, in this region itself, there is some parts which are sliding. Okay, here is where it is full sliding. Okay. Now, what is loss of control? That is the question. Okay. Um, we will um, we'll get back to this question in a, uh, you know, what do you mean by loss of control? In other words, what happens in the, in what we are going to call as the unstable region? Okay, in order to explain that, it's, we have to start with Fx. I will just make a passing remark now, but we will come back to this uh, later in the course, maybe I mean after a couple of days. Okay, we will come, come back to this. And let us just go back to Fx. I thought I will do that later because I do not want to, you to live with this doubt. So, let us do that now. So, if I now plot actually sigma Fx, which we had done okay, using that... Uh, brush model, remember that we got a graph, nice straight line like that. In practice, in actuality, in reality, this is not a straight line like that, you know, it is not a flat line rather, maybe a straight line but not a flat line. Because of the temperatures, because of the fact that mu is not a constant as it slides and then when it slides the temperatures are very high flash temperatures as it is called is, uh, the temperatures can reach uh, hundreds of degrees. Uh, some of the recent papers say that it can reach up to 200, 250, 300 degrees. Okay? So, when there is a temperature increase, this mu is no more a constant. We just said that that is mu into Fz. Mu into Fz is, is this. Okay? That is no more a constant because temperatures play a very major role. 
right? Remember uh, our first graph with viscoelastic material behavior, we had three regions, okay? Remember that there is a region with higher temperatures, we plotted that at temperatures at higher temperatures where the viscoelastic properties drop or hysteresis drops and so the friction coefficient which is a function of the hysteresis would again be affected when you are in that region and that is what happens when I move towards that region, that is what happens in here after I reach the peak. With the result that my graph is not going to be a nice graph like that but would go like this and start coming down. So, here what happens, the, the, the wheel has not, you know, come to a halt, but what happens when it, what do you mean by when it come, when it starts coming down? So, in other words, this is an unstable region. The larger you, you break, you know, this, the force is going to come down. And that region where increase in sigma results in loss in Fy, Okay, it's the unstable region and warrants the application of ABS, okay, anti-lock braking system, right. So, if I have to break, I would like to break here, that region rather than go into this region. So, the best way is to get back to, to this curve, to get back to this curve okay so that my force breaking force will increase that's the breaking force effects okay rather than stay in a region where the breaking force is going down fast clear okay that's what happens in fy as well okay some physics before we take this take on to this derivation as i told you before that there is going to be a a race between these two quantities. Now we are going to uh, I'll remove this. So this is the slipping. This is what. This is where you know there is a sliding region. That's the sliding, and these are the deformations, and that's the sliding region. It's very nicely brought out <coughs> in this picture. Thanks to more uh, friction of pneumatic tires we have a very good picture of what really happens. Okay. Now, let us start with combined lateral or combined braking and cornering. Let me call that as combined braking and cornering. Okay. Uh, before we proceed to this derivation, there were some questions on how we can find out that A. Remember that we had a A, what is that A? 2A was the contact patch. Uh, questions on how, how do I get A, how do I get uh, QZ, these were some of the questions at the end of the class. Very simple. Let us say that that is the tire and let us say that that is the ground. In other words, that is the tire which has been deformed. So, in other words, if that is the center of the tire, that is the R, I think I used R, right? R, hope I used that R. Let me call that as A, B, okay? Call that as C and call this point as D. So, let me call that DC as the deformation 
in the z direction or perpendicular okay so that's the ground how do i calculate that a very simple expression delta z is equal to the force fz or fz plus acting divided by the stiffness okay let's say that the stiffness in the z direction is cz right okay then what is a so what is what is this now r minus delta z so a is equal to root of r squared that's r r squared minus r minus delta z square okay which you can expand it leave out delta z square term and uh, you can say a is equal to root of what's it to r delta z this is a very um, i would say an approximation okay nice approximation and uh, that's what you can use if you want to use a on the other thing is how did we get qz right that was another question what is this qz okay we got a very nice expression for it how did we get this very simple again we assume let's say that that's the pressure distribution parabolic pressure, pressure distribution so write down an expression write down an expression for for the pressure distribution k into write some k okay, that's what i am i want to find out how do i find that out qz into dx integrate this from minus a to plus a should result in fz substitute that here do the integration and you will get the expression 3 by 4 fz 3 fz by 4a into 1 minus x by a whole square now this is what we got yeah 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 i i i fully understand i i i agree with you that when rolling tire you you just said that you this is not okay yeah very symmetric distribution yes we make an assumption here in other words rolling resistance is not taken into account in this okay precisely for this reason precisely for this reason we have we have moved slightly away from all this brush models so i'll just since you asked this question we have to we have to talk about models i'll come back to this combined breaking and cornering in a minute but we have to talk about what are called as tire models these brush models i mean they've been extended they've been beaten to death with, with some very smart uh, analysis uh, but still it's a long way to go okay to get the correct what happens exactly in the tire it's not very easy because of the complexities that are involved you're going to see more and more complexity i'm going to spend some time on tires because this is one of the most important topics in vehicle dynamics and it's it's, it's slightly a difficult topic to understand there's a reason why we're going to spend some more time the rest of them uh, we, before we go to lateral dynamics uh, the rest of them are not as difficult as this topic because here you have to get the physics and get a hang of this mathematics it's the reason why we are spending some more time okay tire models are extremely popular i know some of you would have used packages like carsem or maybe even adams that's a which has a number of tire 
models. Tire model is nothing but an equation, a mathematical equation. I will devote a class or two for, for different tire models that are available. Okay. They are mathematical equations. So, model means a, a mathematical equation which gives us f x, f y, m z which we just now saw okay, as a function of say sigma and other quantities okay, which we would see. There will be some uh, stiffnesses and other things C p and so on. Right? So, it is just an equation which gives f y. These equations can be derived by various fashions, can be experimentally determined as well. What we saw in brush model like very nicely he pointed out that what happened to all those things that you said, you know suddenly you say it is a parabolic distribution. Okay? So, the brush model is a simplified model it brings out all the physics. You know, to, if you want to understand it, it is a very good model because you now know friction coefficient, how it affects, you know, this, there is sliding, there is sticking and all that. So, it brings out all the physics, but it is a very fundamental model. Okay? It agrees to a certain extent, does not agree, there have been a lot of things that is happened. Okay? So, that is the fundamental model. So, if I say this is the model, that is the brush model. But people are not happy with, um, with that model. So, they go to what is called as an empirical or semi-empirical models. In other words, they express this as an equation. We will see that typically what is called as magic formula models. We will see that in the next class. We will see that the, by first put forward by Paseka, it is called sometimes Paseka's tire model, a magic formula model is the next level, where you write down an equation and simply do a nice curve fitting of experiments that are done. So, it is a semi empirical model, in other words you do an experiment, I have a curve, then do a curve fitting and then express this as an equation for f x, f y and m z and so on. So, happens that it is called magic formula because there is one equation where the, 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 the structure of the equation is the same whether it is f x or f y or f z. So, that is the next level of formulas. Right. But then these models have again some limitations. So, as the tire speed increases okay, and you want to look at ride, okay, the roads which are not very nice and smooth and you have all the undulations in the road okay, and so on, then, then I have to move to a different level of models. I would like to now look at the dynamic behavior of the belt. I want to know actually how the belt vibrates. That would give rise to noise, that would give rise to vibrations and so on. So, I would go to a next level of models which also would take into account road, the road profile, the envelopment characteristics of the tire and so on, maybe up to a certain frequency. So, you have in that category, so this is the second category and that is the third category. I mean more sophisticated, as we go up our models are becoming more and more sophisticated. Okay. Again we are capturing this with an equation. So, you have at the next level you have what is called as short wavelength intermediate frequency tire models or swift models. A lot of work done by Professor Pasheka at Delft University, you know we are having, we have a number of models like this. Of course, we will talk about other models, bird's eye view of other models, there are other models as well. Okay. Now, lastly we have models which are based on on say finite elements, okay, which brings out all the uh, physics okay, carefully done, if carefully done, 
brings out all the physics that exists in tyre mechanics. So, the finite element of, of, of tyres is, is actually I would say is a very sophisticated finite element analysis. It has all the shall we say difficulties or challenges because the material that you are going to use is geometrically nonlinear, materially nonlinear in the sense that they are hyperelastic, viscoelastic means at least if you want to look at hyperelasticity, it is a hyperelastic material and you have what is called as geometric nonlinearity because the strains are extremely high. Okay. You have contact, you have reinforcements, we saw that there are bells and radial plies. So, the model becomes very complex, but because of the fact that even contact is taken care of well and even the friction uh, coefficient need not be a constant, it can change it uh, with respect to pressure as well as the sliding velocities and so on, okay. the model becomes as sophisticated as you would like it to be. Of course, you have got to do a lot more work for it. You can predict temperatures and if you want to do look at mu as a function of temperatures, that is also possible. Okay. So, these are the models that are available in this sophistication. Okay. There are other interesting things, okay, let me before we get in uh, two more comments before we get into this because we started this and I, I would like to start it in a new class because this derivation is going to be an in, involved in a lot more things I have to say. So maybe we will start a new class or whatever I want to say towards the end of the class, I'm, the next class I am going to say it now, right. Okay. Now, this is this is fine, you know I have an alpha, I have that alpha and that alpha gives me deformation and so there is an F y that is generated, right. The question you may ask is, I am sure at the end of the class you are going to ask, I am taking a turn, okay. This you say when I take a turn, say a constant radius, okay, I am driving a constant radius. That, the steering pad as it is called, I take a constant radius okay, around this pad, I agree with you whatever is happening. On the other hand, I am entering, I am entering a curve or maneuvering, you know. So, what happens? In other words, F y does not exist. You are talking about after the definite, after the development of F y. So, there is a a region where from 0 to F y, I require F y, but F y is not immediately realized, I, I turn it, then there is a time at which because uh, after all this is also a viscoelastic material. So, I, I have that time lag before this F y is developed. Okay. In other words, there is a transient region before which I get into this steady state F y. Okay. So, that transient region has its own mechanics where okay, you develop theories on, on the force development over time and it is usually said that it takes about half a revolution or more, slightly more in order that the force is developed and is characterized by what is called as the relaxation length. Okay. Right. If time permits, we will talk more about relaxation length. The other very uh, interesting phenomena is the development of this F y. Now, F y development as we had seen is when the car 
takes a turn. Okay. Strictly speaking then, if I have a car, let us say that is my car, I do not want to take much time in drawing it. So, it is going straight. Okay. Let us say I have a beautiful road to go okay. and I leave the steering. Would the car go straight or would the car go like that? Forget about even um, an actual experiment. I do not want you to do this experiment. Okay. Do not do this experiment with your cars. Do this experiment in, in one of the numerical codes, say for example, Adams. You would see that the car does not go straight. In other words, even at when there is no camber okay, and no steering given, there would be a, a lateral force that is generated. Okay. This is what is called as ply steer. We will we'll talk about two things ply steer and conicity, but we will first talk about ply steer. This is a very involved concept. So, let us talk about first price tier. Okay. So, in other words, even in straight run, here we are, we are just dealing with it. I have an F y because I am taking a turn. I have an F x because I am braking. Okay. And both are, as I said, are modeled using what are called, or written as a numeric, as a, as a mathematical equation using tire models, fine. But the, is that what, is that all what happens? Is it that can I get an F y by just going straight? You will and that is exactly what is called as ply steer. Will I get, oh yeah, I know you are all surprised and, and always tire mechanics has lot of surprises. That is why this whole topic is, is extremely interesting. interesting. Is it, this, is, this is engineering by itself. Okay? Anything in engineering you say there is a small role here in, in tires. Why does this happen? That is because of an effect on of composite laminates deformation, which is very different from that of deformation of steel. For example, if this belts what we are talking about, you know these belts, these guys who, these are the belts, we saw that they are the guys who run around. Okay. I said that if I look at it from the top, it looked like this. I said there are steel cords that are running like this, there are more than one belt and then there is another belt where I will place it on top and there will be steel cords running like that and so on. Okay. So, in other words, that makes tire a composite. Now, let us forget for a moment that it is a composite material and let us say that that is made up of complete steel. Okay. Now, this is this rubber embedded, I am sorry, the steel embedded in rubber. Let us say that it is steel, it is just steel sheet. Obviously, when you pull this, just pull it, what happens? There is no twist, there is no twist. Okay. Just pull there is thinning which is called as the Poisson's effect, straightforward. What if this material is a composite laminate? Then the behavior is not as simple as this. We will see that in the next class what is the behavior and because of which what happens to the force development and why the car is not going to go straight and so on. Okay. We will finish that and then we will come back to the combined braking and cornering intervention. Okay. Yeah, we will meet in the next class. Mm -hmm.